But before we get to Revelation, uh, and we're going to start that this morning, just a couple of things just to uh, share with you. You may have been given one of these postcards when you came in. It's not that we want you all to die, uh, but there is a vote coming up in the House of Commons on the 11th of September uh, on the assisted dying bill. And uh, Care for the Care, uh, one of the groups that we uh, are involved with and support, have made these available for us. And it's a postcard that you could, if you feel this is something that you would like to write to your MP about, is you can just simply write your name, address, and postcode on it, put a first or second class stamp and send it uh, to whoever is your MP, just to encourage them to think about the uh, different aspects of this bill and with the emphasis of actually let's stop uh, that process of taking what is in God's hands, out of God's hands, and taking it into our own hands. So uh, these are available. If you've given one, please feel free, if you'd like to, to use it. There are some more at the back uh, available to be used as well. The vote will take place on the 11th of September, if that uh, process follows through as is planned. So there's not an awful lot of time, uh, but we'll make that available for next Sunday as well. September starts on Tuesday. And uh, there's a new prayer diary. So I hope you got hold of that. And uh, it's a really good opportunity to pray for the various different things in the life of the church uh, this coming month. And our mission focus during September is going to be the organization called SAFE, which helps us uh, run the Choices course, as well as having various other items for that. So please do pick up a copy of that. Good. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you that your word speaks to us in lots of different ways and in lots of different styles. As we come to this series this morning, we pray that you would help us uh, to begin to understand what it is you're saying to us through this letter that was this vision that was given to John in the book of Revelation. Help us, we pray. Amen. Revelation, the big picture. Start with a story. It was a nice morning yesterday, and uh, we looked at the weather forecast, and we saw that actually it looked pretty good during the morning. So, intrepid as we are, we decided that we would go for a walk. We got a lovely book out, which uh, is Pub Walks Around Hampshire, which somebody kindly gave it to us, and very great little book. The only trouble is it was written in 1990, uh, and some of the directions that are in it aren't quite the same. The world's the same, but some of the landmarks are different. Uh, and uh, so off we went. It was a lovely, beautiful day out in the deep, dark Hampshire countryside. Walking along, fields just been harvested, and there was a flock of about 30 pheasants toddling along. As we walked up the hill, they toddled along ahead of us. Great, it was lovely. And we carried on walking, but... I got us completely and utterly lost. So what was going to be a sort of two and a half hour walk just before lunch, stop off and have a sandwich, became a lot longer. And we thought, where do we go? And we walked and we walked. And the problem was it was woods and farmland with hills. And we couldn't really see very much. So eventually we managed to hit a road. And we walked along that road, and we thought we were going the wrong direction. So we turned around and went the other way. The good thing was we found a nice coffee shop. So Joy and I, we had a nice cup of coffee and a bun. We thought, hey, it's great, we're off again. But we got lost again. And we had no idea really where we are. Out in the countryside, mobile phone didn't work, couldn't look at my GPS. Thought I had an idea of the countryside, but was completely lost. The lovely walk suddenly turned into a bit more of a hmm. And that sort of 50-yard distance, which is comfortable for us as we walk along, became a 100-yard difference. You know that sort of feeling that goes on? What we really needed was a hot air balloon and to rise 200 feet above 
the land. So we could actually see a different perspective and get a bearing as to where we wanted to go. But unfortunately, we didn't carry a hot air balloon with us. We're here. So yes, we did eventually find our way back. But all of that was taking place. What was wonderful and great when we started out suddenly became a bit... And what became, became, oh dear, are we ever going to find that car we parked? And what was sort of great, i feeling fit and fine, became, oh, my legs are sore. And oh dear, the blisters started to hit. And what was a pleasant, lovely opportunity to enjoy the countryside actually became a bit of a drag. If we'd had that hot air balloon and been able to see, we'd have been able to see exactly where we needed to go, and the whole atmosphere would have changed. Revelation is our hot air balloon. Revelation is the letter that God gave to us to help us to see life from a different perspective. To see life when it gets a bit blah from the perspective that God sees, which helps us in the oomph of life. And that's what we're going to be exploring and looking at today. So will you turn with me to Revelation chapter 1? It's going to do a bit of an overview today and get into the book properly next week. But let's just read the first three verses. In Revelation chapter 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave him to show his servants what must soon take place. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant John, who testifies to everything he saw, that is, the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Blessed is the one who reads the words of this, prophe- words of this prophecy And blessed are those who hear it and take to heart what is written in it, because the time is near. Let's pray. Lord, by your Spirit, help us, we pray, to grasp this perspective in life, which helps us in the reality of living as your family, your people, in a fallen world. Amen. The first thing I think we want to try and help us to see and grasp in this book of Revelation is this word testimony. My slides are taking a long time to click today. Hopefully they'll come through eventually. Verse 2. Who testifies to everything he saw, that is the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. It's a testimony that is trustworthy and true. And if we look in God's Word, uh, both here in chapter 1, but also if we flip over to the very end of the book in chapter 22, we read these, thing, these words. So just give me a second. I'm going to move this out and then come back in because I think... The slides will be helpful. Okay, let's try again. Nope, I don't think it's going to work this morning. It's one of those mornings I'm going to go and get myself a copy of my notes that are on there. Hopefully you got a copy of those. Oh, nothing's coming through. Just pictures of family. Um, How frustrating. (laughs) We live in a world which doesn't operate as we want it to, doesn't it? Let's try again. Good. Right. It's funny, isn't it? You can do it all first thing, final twice, went round through this. It's all fine. But isn't that the reality of the world that we live in? You wake up, you go for a walk. Uh, and you think, yes, it's great. And then it all just sort of implodes. Uh, and that impacts. And then, oh, dear. And you think, oh, dear. Yeah? We live in a world which isn't the way it's supposed to be. 
And yet, at the same time, we have this glorious truth that we have a risen Lord Jesus who has won the victory over everything. That all the sin, all the stuff, all the bits of life, he's conquered. And yet, things go wrong. And when you live in the things go wrong bit of life, then we've got to try and work out how does this fit together? And I think, again, that's what this book of Revelation helps us to see. And this the testimony that is trustworthy and true that comes from Jesus. It's a bit like the sort of pieces of a jigsaw, all trying to fit together. When you get them in a box, it doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? You get the sort of edges around. But there are bits that are just really hard to put together. Well, life's like that. And we end up with life like that. We can end up in a circumstance and situation where we just feel we're existing. And God's Word says, let's have life in all its fullness. We had conflicts the other day. We were sitting watching each other, and Joy said to me, is this life in all its fullness? I have no idea why she was looking at me saying that, but I looked across to her and said, don't think so. (laughs) What does it mean? What's the reality of how this works? Well, we have the testimony that is trustworthy and true. And in the book of Revelation, we have this provided for us. In verse 2, this is a word made known by sending his angel to his servant John, who testifies to everything he saw. So this is a testimony. Flip over now. We'll go back to where we were, to Revelation chapter 22. And in verses uh, 22, verse 6, Right at the end of the book, we read these words. The angel said to me, These words are trustworthy and true. The Lord, the God of the spirits of the prophets, sent his angel to show his servants the things that must soon take place. Testimony again. Look at verse 16. We read these words. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright morning star. And in verse 20, he who testifies to these things says, yes, I am coming soon. Now quite often when we read the Bible and we see at the beginning of a book and at the end a similar thing, that gives us a big picture, sorry about the pun, but it's there, yeah, of what this book is all about. This is God's final word to his church to exist. It's a truth to hold on to when life gets tough. It's the truth which is the the hot air balloon which raises us above to be able to see things from a different perspective so that we can see the direction to go in. It's a truth that is there to hold on to when life gets tough. And let's face it, life will get tough. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 5. I'm going to look at one or two different Bible verses today, just to keep us together. Matthew chapter 5, the Beatitudes, verse 11 and 12. Jesus says, Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you. Because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Jesus says, You follow me, you follow me, and it will get tough. Now, who wants to put their hand up and say, I'd love to be insulted? Who'd like to put their hand up and say, I'd love to be persecuted? None of us would. And yet that's the reality of what takes place when people worship Jesus, when their lives are wrapped up with him, when we live for him and him and his purposes, we will suffer because of it. There will be plenty of circumstances and situations where in the workplace, in the college, in the school, where to do things God's way will make no sense from a world's perspective. It will seem as if you are putting yourself up, as it were, like a coconut ready to be shot down. Coconut, hit down. Yeah? 
like those little pheasants that were sort of walking in front of us. Three or four months' time, they're going to be flying off and they're going to have lumps of lead thrown through them. And we're going to eat them. They have no idea about it. There is a world that we live in which does get tough. Sometimes it gets tough because of the actions and things that we do ourselves. And we suffer for our own choices. Sometimes we suffer because of the choices of other people. They do things to us which hurt and damage us. We have no real control over that. Sometimes we suffer simply because it happens. We have no reasoning behind why one person struggles with cancer and another one doesn't. Why one is made redundant and another one isn't. Sometimes these things just happen. There's a mysterious nature. But there is a world that we live in that the truth of the matter is, is tough. And so what we have here is a foundation that gives us something to build on. The word of God and the testimony of Jesus. Verse 2 of Revelation chapter 1 who testifies to everything he saw. That is, the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. So if life's tough, and you think, actually, I'm not quite sure which way to go here, hot air balloon is God's word and the testimony of Jesus. We see things from his perspective. Not only is it a foundation to build our lives on, but it's also a hope to live for. It says about Jesus is coming back. Blessed is the one who reads the words of this prophecy and blessed are those who hear it and take to heart what is written because the time is near. Now, I'm going to look at this a bit later on, but you know, we're 2,000 plus years later <laughs> and, and it talks about the time being near. But in a sense, the time of Jesus' coming and entering in is always near. He is always present. He is always there when things are all up in the creek. There is a God who can be turned to. There is a God of comfort. There is a God who's present. So not only is there a foundation upon which I can build my life, even though I know it's going to get tough and things are going to get difficult, it also gives me a hope to live for. That there is a victory that was won on the cross that will be culminated and fulfilled when Jesus returns. And so within this, truth to hold on to when life gets tough, there is a present help in a world that suffers. Grace and peace is what is written in chapter 1, verse 4. Grace and peace to you from him who is and who was and who is to come and from the seven spirits before his throne. So the testimony is trustworthy and true, and it's given to help us to live in a life where struggles are present. It's also a testimony, number two, that's passed down. Look at verse one. Very interesting. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants what must soon take place. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant John, who testifies to everything he saw. That is the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. This whole letter, this vision, is passed down as a message from God. The revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave him. That's interesting, isn't it? Because we say that Jesus is God. But there are certain things that Jesus does not know. He does not know when the Father is going to say, come back. Only the Father knows that. Somebody was talking to me a couple of weeks ago and saying uh, there's been a new prediction as to when the end of the world is going to be. It came out of the States, as these things tend to do, but somebody's apparently worked out again and there's a date and it'll come and it'll go. Why on earth do people spend so much time and energy doing something that we're told clearly nobody knows? Only God the Father. But there is a sense in which Father, Son, and Holy Spirit operate together 
but there are things that are revealed. And God the Father reveals to Jesus something that he will pass on to help his family, his church, to exist in a world that is not the way it's supposed to be. And Jesus then makes that known to us by sending an angel to John to reveal this wonderful picture that we're going to open up over the next few months. So it's a whole letter, it's a message from God, pass on to Jesus, pass through the angel to John and to us. So we're on some pretty sacred territory here. This is something that is not there to bamboozle or confuse us, but is something that's there to help us to grasp and to understand. And it's there as a blessing for the church that witnesses in a suffering world. So there's a real promise that comes in this book. Verse 3, blessed is the one who reads the words of this prophecy. So does that mean that we could just read it and be blessed? Well, read on. What does it say? And takes, uh, 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 blessed are those who hear it and take to heart what is written in it. In other words, this is a book, this is a letter, this vision that we're there to chew over, to think about, and for it to become part of our core being. For it to be there as a help to us. So the mechanical reading of the word, but a vacant mind is going to be no good. So can I encourage those of us who are here to be part of a small group? Here's a good opportunity to, to join in with the small groups. The notes are, are around this, this morning for the next few weeks. Pick up a copy. If you're not part of a small group, here's a really good opportunity to get together with other people, to look and to explore together. Two minds are always better than one. So on our walk yesterday, I have to admit that joy knew the right direction to go. Even if I was adamant that she was wrong. She was right. Yeah. There are times when it really does help to listen to one another. And these small groups are a good opportunity. There's a notice on the back of the church which shows you sort of details about that. But do, do look to see. Because actually this is a blessing, this book, to the whole church. And it's a blessing to the church that witnesses in a suffering world. Turn with me back to the end of the book again. Revelation chapter 22. So again, we see the beginning and the end. So in the beginning of the book, we're told it's a blessing to those who tear it and take it to heart. And in 22 verse 7, Jesus says, Behold, I am coming soon. Blessed is he who keeps the words of of the prophecy in this book. So in other words, we hear it, we take it to heart, and we apply it into our lives that are struggling perhaps in a suffering world. So this book of Revelation is a book, a letter, a vision that is given to bless the church as it witnesses in a suffering world. Now, that means that we've got to be actively witnessing. We've got to be looking and seeing. And this is where it ties in with our last series when we were looking at Mission Matthew, making disciples. Who are the people around me who need to hear and to see through my living that I worship Jesus, that I'm going to do things his way, even if it costs me? So it's a testimony that's trustworthy and true. It's a testimony that's passed down. And finally, it's a testimony of love. Because God loves us. God does understand, as that wonderful little poem explained, the reality of what it is to live in a world of prejudice. To live in a world where the, those who are dearest and closest to us... The has gone blank. Uh go against us. He, who knows what it is to do what is right and to be slammed for it. Who knows what it is to die on the cross 
and to accept the pain and the suffering. We have one who loves us, who understands what it is to live and work in a fallen world, in a world that's not the way it's supposed to be. And of course, that one is Jesus. Jesus, our Savior. And we love that bit, don't we? The rescuer, the one who comes in and sorts everything out. But the revelation will show us that Jesus also is judge. He is Savior and judge. So all those things that happen to me that are unfair and unjust will one day be sorted out. I don't have to worry about that. I can live differently in the injustices of this world. But I also have to recognize that how I live will too be judged. Judged by my Savior, but how I live matters. And this book of Revelation picks out so clearly the two different paths that come from following the kingdom of God and those who follow the ways of the world. It's very interesting that actually the kingdom of darkness, Satan, is never referred to as a kingdom. It's a dominion of darkness, as we read about in Colossians. Not even given the title because there is no king. There is only one king, and that is Jesus It's a testimony of love and it comes in a way to John that has him falling flat on his face full of fear. Look at verse 17 of, verse, of chapter 1. When I saw him, this is the Son of Man, this is the vision that John is having, I fell at his feet as though dead. Then he placed his right hand on me and said to me, do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. Write what you have seen. Do not be afraid. This is taking place, this vision, somewhere between AD 70 and AD 90, when Christians were being persecuted mercilessly by different Roman Empire, emperors wherein Nero was taking Christians and feeding them to the lions, where he was taking Christians and dipping them in tar and burning them alive in the Colosseum. This was at a time when Christians in business were suffering because they were Christians. John himself is in exile because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus, as he says in chapter 1, verse 9. I wonder what he felt like separated from those he cared for and loved, the churches that he'd been involved in ministering to, day in, day out, just sitting there, no doubt praying, but wondering what on earth was going to happen to the church, to the witness for Jesus. And God speaks into that situation. So what are some of the challenges and the joys ahead of us as we look at the book of Revelation? Well, first of all, there's a style of writing that is hard for us. It's written to people who would have understood it. So we have to do a bit of work in trying to understand the symbols and the pictures. The type of writing is called apocalyptic writing. Don't worry about the big long word. But basically it's using sign languages and symbols and pictures to speak to people in a sort of coded way so that those who have it understand it. But those who perhaps pick it up and don't understand it won't get it. It's there to encourage at a time of struggle and time. So it will be a struggle for us to grasp some of these pictures. I would also encourage you, please, don't take the pictures down to the tattoo shop. Yeah, not a great idea. It's up to you, but you know, we don't want to encourage all of that. There are some weird and wonderful pictures, and I can imagine a few. Whoa, that's great. I'll have that. Thank you. Um, not perhaps the best of ideas. But one of the other challenges that we have with Revelation is it uses a lot of God's Word. It picks up pictures from the Old Testament and the minor prophets. And our understanding of those passages will help us grasp and understand this. 
And so for that reason, quite often, with the symbols and the pictures and the challenges that there are of exploring it, this is a book which many people just either ignore or never open or get so confused and don't mine its depths. We're going to be doing that. But perhaps the biggest challenge that we face is it's the big picture of truth. It helps to starkly point out the wonder and the glory of the victory of Jesus and how it operates in a fallen and broken world. It also looks at the amazing power that Satan, sin, and evil has to destroy life. And so it presents a very clear picture. And it's perhaps the clarity of that picture which makes it hard for us to know how to respond to it. There is a way that leads to life, and there is a way that leads to death. And we can't sit on the fence. We either hold to the truth that Jesus is King and Lord and resurrected Savior and Judge of this whole world, or we reject that and say, it's not for me. So perhaps that is the biggest challenge that many of us would rather sit on the fence to live in the world and to adapt and to be part of the way that the world operates when it suits us. And then when we come into God's presence and God's people and here, we operate differently. The challenge of this book is authentic Christian living in a broken, fallen world. And authentic Christian living will bring with it Opposition, hardship, and challenge. And for many of us, we don't like that. We prefer to sit on the fence. So perhaps the greatest challenge that we're going to have over these next few weeks is to our own hearts. It's not the intellectual understanding of numbers and symbols, but the reality that Jesus truly is King, truly is Lord that his way is right and all other ways are wrong. And we have to choose. Am I going to follow Jesus in spite of all that comes along? Or am I going to say no? My prayer is that we all say yes that we will see this hot air balloon picture of the world and see it with greater clarity so that we know how to make those decisions that are going to be blessing to us long term and to the people we seek to proclaim Jesus to day in, day out. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you that you understand what it is to live in a broken world. Thank you that you speak into that with this word of love passed down for our benefit. And we do ask and crave that work of your Holy Spirit to help us understand fully in a way which will impact our living, the truth of this book. For Jesus' sake, amen.